Okay, the next topic is to discuss the structure and functionality of the factory method pattern. And of course, this is our chance to kind of talk about what you'd find in the Gang of Four book. So the intent of the factory method pattern is to provide an API for creating an object, but leave the choice of the object's concrete type to its derived classes. Now, this is just the, the intent straight out of the Gang of Four book. I don't think that's a very good intent. Uh, and I'll explain to you why I don't think it's a very good intent later. Um, but let's first talk about what they say, and then we'll talk about a better way to look at it. So you should apply this pattern when a class can't anticipate the objects it must create. So in other words, we don't know necessarily at design time all the different kinds of variabilities that could exist over time. So in, instead of hard coding those things, we're going to make a factory method that's going to defer the choice for us. You should also apply this pattern when a class wants its derived classes to specify the object it creates. So in this particular case, you can see we have lots of different, different types of subclasses of user command factory. We have a format command factory and a macro command factory and a print command factory, and they all make the corresponding products, the different kinds of subclasses of user command impl. This use of derived classes is optional. And in fact, I've mentioned before, I don't really like it because it gets unwieldy very quickly. Uh, an alternative approach, which I tend to like better, is just to pass a parameter to the factory method and then let the factory method figure out what kind of object to make based on the parameter that's passed to it. And then another reason to apply this pattern is there's a need to decouple the creation of an object from its subsequent use. And this is really the most important aspect of this pattern. It's decoupling creation from use. And I, I often use the metaphor of, you know, legislation is like sausage. You don't want to have to know how it's made. Well, that's often the case with, with objects. You, you like to use them, but you don't really want to know how they're created because creation can be messy. The use is very simple, but the creation is messy. Uh, a good example of that in uh, Java concurrency, or actually for that matter, C and C++ concurrency, is starting a thread. So starting a thread is going to create a separate uh, activation record and a, a stream of operations that can run in their own, on their map to their own core or mapped onto a core. And that start operation is a factory method and it shields you from an enormous number of very complicated steps taking place under the hood. So we're very fortunate that people have come up with ways to encapsulate creating threads within factory methods because you sure as heck don't want to have to do that yourself. Uh, other examples that are uh, familiar would be things like opening a file. So opening a file is a very messy thing under the hood or starting a network connection, very messy thing under the hood. But we have operations like open and connect and so on that shield us from all the complexities of what's happening beneath the surface. So let's talk about the structure and participants. And again, this is straight out of the Gang of Four book and I'll kind of amend it as we go through it to talk about other ways of doing things. By the way, lest you think that I am uh, blasphemously modifying the Gang of Four canon. The Gang of Four actually acknowledge all the things I'm talking about. It just wasn't their, let's say, the preferred embodiment or the described embodiment. But never fear, everything I'm talking about is anticipated within the context of the Gang of Four factory method pattern disclosure. It just is something that uh, they didn't choose to make the first class exemplar of their pattern. But it's, it's in there, and I'll talk about that in a second. So here's what it looks like. We've got um, a product, which is typically the, either a base class or uh, a bridge-based abstraction. As we see here, what product could be the user command or the user command impl. And that's what the client's going to work with. We then have the creator, which is the thing that makes uh, the user, sorry, the creator is, is basically the base class um, that's going to be used to manufacture the appropriate concrete product, which can be treated as a product, and that has a factory method in it. And then we have the concrete product, and that would be whatever the creator makes that is the appropriate subclass. So that could be eval command, print command, macro command, um, format command, quit command, and so on and so forth. So that's what is created, but it comes back to the user as if it was just a product. So it looks like something to the user that's very simple, very canonical, 
But in fact, what was created was actually a subclass. And then there's also this thing called concrete creator, which you use if you implement the canonical gang of four disclosed uh, pre preferred embodiment variant of the pattern. But our app doesn't do it this way. We, we pass in a string to the creator's factory method, this guy up here, and have it make the appropriate concrete product.